What's up guys, it's Tealus here. Welcome back to the Hall of the Guardian for the second video in this two video series looking at Fire Mages and the changes that are coming to them in World of Warcraft Legion. We have already been through the abilities and the artifact weapon in the first video. Uh, very little changes coming to Fire uh, Mages overall. Very little changes. And uh, don't I wouldn't expect too much to change in the PvE and PvP talents. That is what we will be going through in this video, taking a look at what changes uh, are coming to the talent section for a Fire Mage in World of Warcraft Legion. So let's go ahead and get into it. With the talents, uh, if you look at this talent screen right here, you're going to notice a lot of abilities that look familiar, or at least icons that look familiar, and several of the same ability names. However, a lot of them have had uh, their... Uh, basically their abilities changed and stripped. Uh, I'd say probably at least half of them that you recognize on here no longer operate the way that they used to. So, we're going to go through it starting with the 15 tier. First we have Pyromania, casting Pyroblast or Flame Strike while Hot Streak is active. Has a 8% chance to instantly reactivate Hot Streak. I don't think I could ever get this to uh, show for you uh, very well. Uh, I'm going to give it like three attempts and then from there we will see if we can get it to uh, actually activate there's a second attempt and I'll give it one more chance um, I'm just gonna use this and cheat here and yep yeah, I did not get it so uh, it has an 8% chance to instantly activate hot streak I uh, just know that that uh, that option is there um, but uh, it's it's just a passive buff overall. Second option here, you have Conflagration. Uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, passive Fireball also applies Conflagration to the target, dealing an additional 4,000 fire damage over 8 seconds. Enemies affected by either Conflagration or Ignite have a 10% chance to flare up and deal 9,000 fire damage to nearby enemies. Um, basically more passive damage this actually puts a dot onto your fire this is going to be something that you look at in terms of pve um i'm not quite sure i think for this tier it's basically going to be a, a theory crafter you know what is the best um nothing you know too big stands out uh the last option here is fire starter your fireball spell always deals a critical strike when the target is above 85 percent health uh, this can be useful in PvP when you're opening up in PvP. Uh, gives you more crits. Uh, but overall, um, I believe it's going to be up to the Theory Crafters to decide uh, which one is best for uh, maximum damage output. And at the same time, I really think in terms of PvP, it's going to be which one you actually enjoy the most. Uh, which, which one of these you actually are going to like the best. Probably for PvP, I'd probably would go fire starter so I can get that instant burst on on the target and really deal some damage um, because you know fire starter into a fire blast or a phoenix's flames and just you can build it up really quickly and deal a lot of damage so that's something that I like uh, but really you're gonna have all options open on the 15 tier on the 30 tier we have shimmer I love this ability so it replaces your blink, but it basically gives you two charges. And at the same time, um, it allows you to uh, cast while moving. So that was a very bad example because I was in a bad position. But let me go ahead and cast Pyroblast here, and then I'm going to shimmer ahead. And it's supposed to not... Uh, it's castable while casting, excuse me. Uh, it should be able to continue casting. Uh, which is kind of weird. Uh, I don't know why that would be in the tooltip. And then you couldn't... Uh, you couldn't uh, continue to cast. Let me see if I can get it lined up perfectly so that we can see uh, if indeed this will still be the case. See, it interrupts it every time. That shouldn't be the case. It should be able to allow you to continue casting. I'm not quite sure if that's a bug or not because otherwise there's no reason for it to say... Uh, castable while casting because uh, blink has always been castable while casting um, so it really doesn't make sense for that to be there uh, but it is an option I mean I can sit here and I can still 
Oh, okay, never mind. For some reason, I always thought you could blink in the middle of a cast, and it would just stop your cast automatically. So maybe that's something that has changed in World of Warcraft Legion. Uh, I apologize for not picking up on that. That's a little strange to me. I always thought you could immediately blink every time you were casting something, no matter what. Uh, but th that doesn't seem to be the case. That really is a silly effect there, then. If, uh... If you're just going to give me the benefit of being able to cast while casting, while not, while still not being able to continue my cast, I mean that kind of is what I get the sense when it says castable while casting, and if it's not there, then it, it kind of defeats the purpose of it. So it could be a bug, or that could be the way it is. But the big thing about Shimmer is that it replaces Blink and it gives you two charges of, uh, actually of Blink basically, and it's unaffected by the global cooldown. So um, those, like, unaffected by the global cooldown and castable casting makes me think that you can still cast while in the middle of it, but I could be wrong. They may, it may be bugged, there may be something there that's not working correctly, but for the moment, uh, right now it does interrupt your casting. Uh, hopefully that will change in the future, but I think uh, even without that, the big thing here is that you have basically blink on a 7.5 second cooldown, which is immensely helpful for PvP. And I think this will be easily the number one PvP option to take a Shimmer. It just gives you great mobility. With that being said, though, um, I am not sure if Shimmer will break you from all stuns and bonds. Uh, that's something I do not know. If it does not, uh, this will not be taken in PvP at all. Uh, because Blink is essential. I mean, that is the one thing that is essential with Blink, is that you're able to get rid of stuns and bonds with that. Uh, so if Shimmer doesn't do that, then you may not want this at all. Especially if this is not a bug, and for some reason you get interrupted with casting uh, every time you um, every time you actually use Shimmer. So, uh, we'll have to see how the bug fixes go from there. But that is Shimmer. It could either be absolutely the number one PvP talent, or if it does not remove uh, from stuns and bonds, I probably wouldn't. It probably wouldn't be a very good PvP talent. Cauterize. This basically uh, still functions the way it does on life. However, it has blazing speed built into it as well. So you still have the fatal damage brings you back up to 35 health. Um, while burning, movement speed slowing effects are suppressed and your movement speed is increased by 150%. So you have a 6 seconds on that. Blazing speed used to only last for 1.5 seconds. So you basically get this, uh, you know, the fatal damage and then you have 150% increased movement speed uh, to get out. Uh, just be careful if you're, if you're, if you're next to a, a, a rogue that has a, like, uh, cut to the chase or something. I can't remember what that talent is that basically matches uh, your speed and plus 5%. They'll be at 155% movement speed and then your cauterize will be worthless against the rogue. So if you notice rogues on the other team, this is something you probably wouldn't want to choose. However, I would consider this to be the least popular PvP talent. Um, this is more something that I would probably see in PvE. That is because this last one here is Cold Snap, and Cold Snap is completely different. Uh, Ice Block now has two charges and heals you for 3% of your maximum health every one second. So, just showing up here, Ice Block lasts for 10 seconds. That's going to be a 30% heal. And basically, you have a 5-minute cooldown, so it's a 2.5-minute cooldown because you have uh, two charges on your Ice Block. I can see this being used in both PvP and PvE. You have more Ice Block charges. And Ice Block in a PvE setting allows you to just negate massive damage from a boss. Like if you have to run away uh, for a massive damage boss, you can Ice Block and heal yourself up at the same time and then continue back on the boss, which I think is pretty powerful. So in terms of PvE, I see Cold Snap and Cauterize being taken. In PvP, depending on how Shimmer is working and how it functions, I see it being Shimmer, if not Cold Snap. Uh, Cauterize, I don't think necessarily is the best option in PvP. In the third tier, we have Mirror Image. This is one of the returning talents that stays the same. So basically, same old, same old three copies. They deal damage 40 seconds. Same thing with Encanter's Flow. Everything about Encanter's Flow should still function. Uh, the same magical energy uh, builds up to 20%, diminishes down to 4%, cycling every 10 seconds. That is uh, how it works on Alive right now. Uh, it's just been moved all the way down to the 45 tier. Rune of Power has been changed though, and I really do like this change because one of the things that turned me off from doing PvE 
uh, mage overall was this this 90 tier that had Encanter's Flow, Rune of Power, Mirror Image. Uh, I always went Mirror Image, but I knew that if I did not have, um, I knew that if, if Mirror Image wasn't the you know top DPS, I wasn't going to get as much damage, which was kind of disappointing. Rune of Power places a Rune of Power on the ground for 10 seconds which increases your spell damage by 50% while you stand within 8 yards, max 2 charges. Notice, 10 seconds, okay, that's the big deal here, okay? So the old Rune of Power would last, uh, you could place 2 at a time and it lasted for 3 minutes. So you are expected to kind of dance around this buff, I should say, and you know, deal with it. And you can place it anywhere. Now it automatically places it underneath you and it's a damage buff. So if you have like a whole bunch of burst damage lined up, you have all your Phoenix Flames up, your Fire Blasts up, you maybe just got a, a Pyro Blast proc, you can cast, you know, the rune underneath you and then just unload along with your uh, combustion to just do as much damage as possible with rune. Which is pretty cool. Uh, I can see this being taken in all... This would never be taken in PvP. The old Rune of Power would never be taken in PvP. It was just absurd because making yourself stand still in PvP was did not work. But if you only have to stand still for 10 seconds to deal a lot of damage, that is acceptable. And so I can see Rune of Power easily being taken in PvP, along with maybe Mirror Image, and then... PvE, it's really going to be up to the, the like the theory crafters, just like it was for the 90 tier, of deciding which one is going to be the most powerful for you, uh, where the rune of power fits in the rotation, mirror image, etc. Uh, that'll be up to them to figure out. On the 60 tier, uh, first we have a flame on. Uh, well, first let's go with the passive. We have controlled burn. When you gain heating up, you have a 10% chance to instantly activate hot streak. I don't think I'll I'll get this to proc either. But uh, we'll go ahead and try it, um, see if I can get heating up, didn't get it there, uh, we'll go ahead and just, uh, we'll go ahead and burn it with a scorch, and we'll try it again, and I'll just, I'll attempt each time to get it, uh, and if I don't get it then that's fine, uh, we will get a couple more attempts at this, and it doesn't look like we're going to get it. Yep, that was the last one. So, uh, it is an option there. So, uh, something that you can't... Oh, and I just had Pyromaniac, uh, I believe it was Pyromaniac. Yes, I just had Pyromaniac proc right there. That's the first time we've gotten a Pyromaniac to proc there. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, so, uh, Pyromaniac proc, but Controlled Burn did not. So... Control burn when heating up, you have a 10% chance to instantly activate Hot Streak. The second option here is going to be Flame On. Immediately grants two charges of Fire Blast. So if I go ahead and burn uh, both my charges of Fire Blast, so I get a Pyro Blast off, I can use Flame On, get them both back, and do it again. And remember, it's off the GCD, so you get it off really quickly. You can get two Pyro Blasts in there really quickly. Uh, to deal a lot of damage. So that's something that you can do that's really nice. Blast Wave returns and essentially uh, is essentially the same as it is on live. 70% reduction in your uh, speed, which is going to be kind of big in PvP. Uh, primary target will de deal increased 100% increased damage. However, it does not replace your Ice, Ice Nova, your Frost Nova, which is a big deal. So PvPers, I really see taking this. Um, anything to get more people away from you, to get some peel for you in PvP, I think is essential. And I'm going to go ahead and use it right here. I believe it has a little bit changed a spell effect, so we'll go ahead and use it. You can see right there, a wonderful spell effect uh, from the old, uh, the old Blast Wave, which I think has just been the same spell effect forever. Um, so they finally got rid of that, and they brought in a new one. So... Honestly, I see PvPers taking Blast Wave, though they could take Flame On if they really want some serious burst. Um, other than that, PvEers, I not once again, I think it's going to be up to the PvEers, uh, the Theory Crafters, to decide which one's the top here, because the 100% increased damage could be really a, a really big deal uh, in terms of how much damage this does. However, this deals 45,000 damage. Your Fireball does 45,000 damage, so you're, you're, it's a double of Fireball damage. 
So it, it does do a lot of damage for an instant cast. So it really will be up to the PvE ears to decide which one is better. However, I get the feeling that Flame On and Controlled Burn will probably be better than Blast Wave. In the 75 tier, Ice Flows is another one that generally works uh, how it does on live. Um, not much has been changed. They've changed the uh, tool tip a little bit, but for the most part, it essentially stays the same. Makes your mage spell cast time a shorter 10 seconds, castable while moving, unaffected by the global cooldown, and castable while casting. See, this one says castable while casting, uh, whereas Shimmer does not say, well, it, ca it does say castable while casting. So I'm really hoping that Shimmer is just a bug and they fix it, and it will be the way I imagined it is that I can blink forward and I'll still be in the middle of my fireball cast if someone's like trying to get away. Uh, Ring of Frost still functions the same. Summon a Ring of Frost. Uh, it, the spell visual has not changed for it at all. It still works the same. Limit 10 people the same. Ice Ward has changed. Frost Nova now has two charges. This is my personal favorite in terms of PvP. Uh, having double Frost Nova I think is huge. In case you haven't noticed, Frost Nova does have an improved spell visual as well. It's really nice. Um, but having two Frost Novas and then having a Blast Wave as well really gives you some peel as a Fire Mage. It really makes you pretty strong in PvP, and I really do like it. Um, do remember that uh, Flame Strike has that 50% movement speed reduction as well in PvP, if you're thinking about that. In terms of PvE, uh, it'll most likely be Ice Flows, uh, without question. Uh, I don't... You, I don't see Ring Frost being taken. Uh, I see Ice Flows being the one. Ring of Frost may be taken in PvP, but I honestly... Uh, I honestly just kind of see uh, Ice Ward being the number one choice taken. I think the only way Ring of Frost probably comes into the equation again is that if it's instant cast again. Uh, which it hasn't been instant cast in a very long time. So uh, we'll see how that goes down. In the 90 tier, we have good old Living Bomb. Uh, Living Bomb has not changed very much. However, um, they've gone back to this uh, old uh, version of other enemies hit by the explosion of Living Bomb uh, also become a Living Bomb, but this cannot uh, spread further. So, as you can see here, I used Living Bomb on the Construct, and then it spread to other targets. Now, the one thing I do like about this is that the old Living Bomb lasts for 12 seconds, so it was a dot that you had to maintain and keep up. This Living Bomb only lasts for 3.75 seconds, so it's something you add in your rotation, but it's not something that you're going to have to constantly try and keep up with a, uh, like a, as a dot. So it has a cooldown now, 11.2 seconds, um, and it only lasts for 3.7 seconds. It's an AoE damage option. Uh, it cannot be spread by Inferno Blast, but it, I mean, well, what would be Fire Blast now? But at the same time, it's just going to spread automatically once it explodes. So, honestly, this is one of my favorite options for PvP, and probably my favorite option period in this tier. We have Unstable Magic, which still functions essentially exactly as it does on live. 25% chance stealing 50% additional damage. On live, it was 30% chance. Uh, so small nerf there for fire, but otherwise not too much. Flame Patch, it, Flame Strike leaves behind a patch of flames, which burns enemies within it for 36,000 damage, it looks like. Uh, to be honest, I do not like this. I would never use this in PvP, and I probably wouldn't like it in PvE either. You can see the flame patch here. This is brand new. It's a nice spell visual, wonderful spell visual. So it, it may be useful for AoE fights, but if it's a really mobile AoE fight, uh, I wouldn't expect this to be taken at all. I would expect the Living Bomb to be much more popular. Right now in this tier, I would expect Living Bomb to be the popular in both uh, aspects of the game, but uh, the Theory Crafters will have to see which one actually is on top. That leaves us with the level 100 tier. Kindling uh, pretty much functions, in fact it exactly functions the way it used to on live. Uh, you know, your Frostfire Bolt is no longer an ability, but your Fireball, Pyroblast, and Fire, Bra Fire Blast critical strikes reduce the remaining cooldown and combustion by one second. They got uh, Fire Blast changed there, unlike they did, uh, unlike uh, <laughs> in the uh, Artifact Weapon Tree, which they still have it as Inferno Blast. But, um... So that has been changed, uh, but otherwise Kindling as a spell is essentially the same. They got rid of Prismatic Crystal. Thank goodness. I did not like Prismatic Crystal at all. 
I thought it was a terrible spell, and I'm glad it's gone. Uh, I do not think any spec has it at all now. Uh, Frost does not have anything like that. I do not think it is just uh, they have their own stuff now. So, wasn't a fan of Prismatic Crystal. Uh, Warlocks, I just did an Affliction Warlock video. They have something similar to it, but it actually makes sense. Um, and, it, and it works a lot better. I like it a whole lot better. It's not this weird AoE burst thing. So, Prismatic Crystal is gone. Um, and that's part of the reason, um, Blizzard, this, this was a, this was like a power tier in, at level 100, and Blizzard has gone away from tiers kind of having a theme. Yes, the 90 tier is all about AoE damage, but then you look at something like the 75 tier, where you have Ice Flows, which is pretty different from something like Ring of Frost and Ice Ward. And then another good example would probably be the 60 tier. You have Utility more option with blast wave and then you got different options here so uh and then you have the 30 tier which i think uh really uh, it gives you utility options which is a very general um it's a it's a general aspect of things instead of saying hey these three items will be life savers or ways you can heal yourself instead this is like three utility options and saying a utility option is much more generic and open-minded than the way it used to be. Uh, the 60 tier, for example, was a survivability tier. Um, that is the old tier that Cauterize and Cold Snap were on. Uh, this could be considered a survivability tier, but Shimmer is quite different uh, than something like Greater Invisibility. Um, this is gives you more mobility, whereas this is, you know, Cauterize is something that's more like, you know, kind of keeping your uh, your health up or keeping you alive same thing with ice snap so they have gone away from that making sure that each tier has a theme to it and kind of mix things up to give you interesting talent choices across the board so uh, that was a quite a detour but let me go ahead and get back to cinder storm so this is an ability throws a spread of six cinders that travel in an arc dealing 14,000 fire damage to enemies it hits damage increased by 30 percent if the target is affected by your ignite so um, I mean you can put ignite on a target real quickly and then you'll see what cinder storm can do um, it's pretty cool it goes in that arc there it's if I remember correctly it actually I believe is a skill shot let me I'm targeting that right now I'm gonna fire this way it is a skill shot so this is something that you're going to have to you know line up and attack people it doesn't matter what you have selected I can have this uh, the greater bulwark over there selected and then I'm gonna try and aim and get all three of these uh, right in a row there and I think I only got like one of them or so this will be interesting to use I think if you're with a PvE boss that is very large cinder storm would be probably a, a hit like it would be a, an obvious choice to take because you know that each one of these is going to hit, and then when the increased damage with your Ignite, it's going to do even better. So that's something that you can look at. Right there, I hit, you know, not only these two bulwarks, but I hit the greater one in the back. So it, it's an option, and once again, it'll be up to PBUs to decide which one's the best. Uh, I think Cinderstorm, though, on any type of large boss will be uh, kind of an obvious choice. The last option here is Meteor. Uh, Meteor, to my knowledge, has not changed at all deals lots of damage, uh, lands after uh, three seconds. I do not think the spell visual has changed. Uh, let me show it to you though, just to make sure. You can see it right here. And there comes your Meteor and deals damage. So uh, Meteor is, is still my favorite option in terms of uh, what you have as a uh, Fire Mage. I do like the ground visual that they have to show the burning ground. I think that has been upgraded. But overall, it is still essentially the same. So, that is the PvE uh, talent tree. There's a lot of changes. Uh, even though a lot of abilities look the same, there's a lot of changes there, which I think are a lot of fun. With, which brings us into the honor talent tree. These are separate. These are what you will get in PvP. Now, PvP combat is going to work like this in Legion. You will start at level 1. You'll work your way all the way up to level 50. Uh, as you work your way up to level 50, you will gradually gain these talents, starting with level 1, Gladiator's Medallion. By 10, you'll have Firestarter, and then by 13, you'll start with Adaptation and start moving down the second row. 46 is the last one you will get, which will be Greater Pyroblast. 
and then once you hit 50 you can prestige and start all the way back at level 1 again if you would like or you can just stay there at level 50 and say forget prestiging if you prestige you get stuff like cosmetic stuff like armor and mounts and stuff like that pets I'm not quite sure I do know mounts are in the equation somewhere but I'm not quite sure what else you can get besides that for prestiging with that being said, let's look at the first tier, which is all about the Honorable Medallion. Uh, you get an Honorable Medallion when you first enter a battleground, and it is a three-minute, like, uh, trinket that is, uh, it's a three-minute heirloom trinket, basically. So you have a three-minute heirloom trinket, and you can choose to grab Gladiator's Medallion, which will replace it and put it with the normal two-minute trinket that everyone is accustomed to. The second option is Adaptation, which is a passive. All loss of control effects with a duration of 5 seconds or more will activate your Honorable Medallion spell, but only causes it to incur a 60 second cooldown. So that gives you a 60 second trinket, but you no longer have control over it. You can still use Honorable Medallion, but it will put Adaptation on a 3 minute cooldown as opposed to a 60 second cooldown. Just take note of that. Relentless is an option. Uh, I honestly only see like tanks taking this or Resto Druid. Uh, it will replace your honorable medallion and duration of incoming crowd control effects will be reduced by 25%. This next tier is all about uh, ranged DPS. First is train of thought, damage increased by 15%. Being attacked will cancel this effect for 8 seconds. I'm not really a big fan of this one because, uh, I mean, if you get, like, nudged at all uh, by anything, your damage drops by 15%, which kind of sucks. Uh, there's only one class that I think will really benefit from this, and I'll get to that in the next, uh, actually it'll be the next video that I get to. There's Mind Quickness, which increases your haste by 6%, and then there's Initiation, Critical Strike da uh, critical strike of your damaging abilities and attacks increased by 30% on targets at or above 80% health. Uh, this is a no-brainer, I think, for Fire Mages. This is what you'll be taking. Everything is revolving around crit as Fire Mages, as it always is, so Initiation will most likely easily be the one that you take. Now we're starting to get into the mage specific talents. First one here, we have Netherwind Armor, reduces the chance you will suffer a critical strike by 15%. Burning Determination, after being interrupted while casting a spell, you will become immune to being interrupted while casting for 8 seconds. Uh, I was a fan of this for Arcane, not so much for Fire, uh, mostly because you have the mobility of Scorch. The last option here is Prismatic Cloak, after you blink, spells have a 100% chance to miss you for 2.5 seconds. Um, I'm not really sure on the mechanics of of a spell, like, when they actually do damage, whether it's when they actually physically meet you, or the damage is already decided once it's been launched. Um, I think it's when it actually hits you, which means that you could probably blink into, uh, let's say someone's pyroblast is coming at you, you could blink into the pyroblast and have it miss you, which is something crafty that you could do. Uh, if I have this in my head correct, uh, correctly, that uh, damage will not occur until it actually hits the target. I mean, even now, uh, as I cast this, it doesn't do damage until it actually hits the target. So the idea would be that you can, uh, if you see someone casting like a Chaos Bolt or something really big, uh, you can blink into it and then they'll miss, which would be something, uh, it'd be a high level move for someone for something for someone to do uh, and I think it's an interesting choice on the fourth tier we have temporal shield you should remember this a little bit uh, this used to be I believe a talent somewhere or just a flat line uh, basic ability but it envelops you in a temporal shield for four seconds all damage taken while shielded will instantly be restored when the shield ends so uh, it burst at, you know kind of like prismatic cloak if you see burst damage coming your way you can mitigate it with temporal shield dense ice increases the amount your ice barrier absorbs by 60 percent but your ice barrier can only absorb physical damage i'm not sure about this um there are so many classes out there that can do non-physical damage uh, even melee I mean, we're talking about, uh, I, I can't, I, it might have been Arcane Mage, um, in which I was discussing this, uh, but basically, other than warriors, um, that are pretty much strict, uh, physical damage, and like feral druids, uh, and maybe one speck of rogues, I think outlaw rogues, 
almost all the specs in the game have some form of non-physical damage to deal out with you. Pretty much all DK specs, um, or at least I should say all DPS DK specs. The uh, Survival Hunter is pretty physical oriented, however, uh, and so is, um, I believe, Marksmanship. But uh, Beast Mastery... Uh, I can't quite remember. They did change it to physical. So hunters are pretty physical as well. Uh, but other other than hunters and warriors, you're looking at uh, the bulk of classes having even rogues. You know, rogues with poisons. And there's a lot of abilities that change a lot of subtleties. Uh, damage into shadow damage. So you're, you're playing with fire here. Uh, no pun intended because we're talking about fire mages. Uh, <laughs> you... You can, uh, there isn't, there aren't that many classes that, uh, can mitigate, uh, that are going to be dishing out a lot of physical damage. I think there's, there's more classes out there, more specs out there than ever that are dealing, uh, different types of, uh, even though they're melee, they're dealing different types of magical damage in their rotations. So be careful with that. Like, if, if warriors are, like, a huge problem, then, then this is something that you can easily take and be like, finally I can deal with this but you know just keep that in mind when uh, looking at dense ice as a talent the last option here is kleptomania spell steal now is a 15 second cooldown but steals all spells from the target um i don't know how popular this will be anymore because uh no longer do you have a, like a lot of buffs and so forth they, they've really done a good job in my opinion of just eliminating how many buffs we were giving out across the game so this could be good, but at the same time, I don't know how popular this could be. Uh, it's going to be up to the mage. With that, we have the fire, the fire mage specific talents down here. In tier 5, we have Tinder. If you have not cast Fireball for 8 seconds, and your next, your next Fireball will deal 30% increased damage with a 50% reduced cast time. Uh, that'll reduce it down to, I think, even below Scorch. Yes, it'll reduce it down to even below Scorch, which is awesome. And I think this can be pretty powerful because you can be using Scorch for a bit and then you fire off a, a Fireball. Or you'll be using Scorch and Fire Blast and other stuff to get off a Pyro Blast. It, it, it'll make you pretty mobile as a Fire Mage. Your second option here is World in Flame. Reduces the cast time of Flame Strike by 3 seconds and increases its damage by 30%. Well, why would this be popular? Well, Flame Strike already costs as a 3.75 second cast. This will bring it down to a 0.75 second cast. And remember that uh, it reduces the movement speed by 50% uh, just by being hit by it, okay, for 8 seconds. Now, the only thing that I see with this is that you have better options like Double Frost Nova, you have a Blast Wave that you can take, you have options already there to deal with kind of slowing them down. So in that sense, I'm not really quite sure how great, uh, you know, dishing out a Flame Strike will be. And remember that Flame Strike is also affected by your Hot Streak, so in Emergency, you could use that. The last option here is going to be Flare Up. Fire Blast charges increased by one, so you have three. And using Fire Blast on a target not afflicted by your Ignite will refund a charge. Um, so, basically, um, you can use this a lot as an opener and not lose charges on a Fire Blast. Uh, and it gives you extra charges, that'll give you three Fire Blast charges, and three Phoenix Flames, uh, all of them critical strike, uh, have critical strike potential. And then you can get a lot of Pyro Blasts off in the middle of that, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, so really, this is going to be kind of a choice here. Uh, I kind of like Tinder the best in this in this three row in this tier five here, but uh, really it's gonna be kind of up to uh, PVPers to decide. In the sixth tier, the final tier, we have Fire Starter. Your Fireball reduces the cooldown of your combustion by 20 seconds. That's a ton. A two minute cooldown on combustion and combustion. Uh, just in case you have forgotten, engulfs you in flames for 10 seconds, increasing your critical strike chance by 100% and granting you mastery equal to critical strike stat, unaffected by the global cooldown and castable while casting. Um, that's pretty potent, and when you combine it with something like Tinder, um, you know, 
it, it well with Tinder it really wouldn't make too much of a difference because Tinder is all about having breaks in between your fireballs. But um, if you're using fireball a lot, um, this could be something that's useful. If you like say are using uh, talents that put you in place like Root of Power and so forth, and you're using Ice War to you know just keep them snared, this can be pretty useful. Get that combustion off cooldown as much as possible. Second option here is Flame Cannon. After standing still in combat for two seconds, your maximum health increases by 5%, damage done increases by 5%, and spell range increases by 5%. This effect sacks up to three times and lasts for five seconds. I hate this ability. I'm just putting it out there. I hate this ability. Why? If you've ever played a hunter, I absolutely hate it. I can't even remember the ability now. It's out of the game, thankfully. But they had an ability, and I can't remember what it was, where if you stand still long enough, uh, you'll deal increased damage. And I think it was actually a mastery, possibly last expansion. I don't know. Marks is my next video that I have up, so we'll, we'll take a look at it then. But I hated it, because it was so difficult to deal with in PvP. You didn't want to stand, you don't really want to stand still in PvP. You don't want that. And when you have something that encourages standing still in PvP, it's really frustrating. Uh, it never worked out, uh, standing still. I'm glad this is at least a talent, so you can at least forget about it. That's something that Mark's Hunters were never allowed to do. They could not forget about it. Um, so this is, it's an option, but I just, I don't see anybody taking it, because I, Hunters had this same issue, and they hated it. Um, I found very little people who actually hate it. The whole idea was that you were a sniper uh, as a marksman, and so you needed time to aim, and so when you sat there and aimed more, you were better. Um, I don't know. As a marksman, I feel kind of like Legolas, and Legolas didn't need time to aim. He just kind of just flew his arrows off wherever and, and hit every single target no matter what. Honestly, I, I don't like this, and I do not see this being taken. I see Firestarter being taken, or this one. Greater Pyroblast hurls an immense fiery boulder that causes 25% of the target's total health and fire damage. That's awesome. This is so cool. Um, it, to my knowledge, it does not replace your actual Pyroblast. So your Pyroblast is different from this one. This one's not going to be affected by Hot Streak, but you can sit there off to the side and use this to start off a battle and you already start off with 75 with 25 percent of their health gone um you just pyro blast them in the face and then you can hit them with phoenix flames and fire blast and fire off more pyro blasts to the face and it's just a lot of fun uh really overall pvp and pve talents and changed abilities while very little has changed with their abilities um their talents have been shuffled around a bit and I think things are going to be better in PvE for Fire Mage and much better in PvP for Fire Mage. I know that I have faced, uh, I think I said it last video or maybe earlier in this video, I, I faced a Fire Mage as a Havoc Demon Hunter. And even though it's one of the most mobile melee specs in games, he was kiting me so easily, which is so strange. Um, usually I, I turn to Hunters when I think of kiting. Um, but this, this fire mage was able to just kite me so easily, and um, it's frustrating to deal with him. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really do like where fire mages are headed. I think they will be in great shape in World of Warcraft Legion. As of the last patch, they've been great in PvP. So, uh, we'll see if that continues. Uh, it all depends on how Blizzard uh, balances damage numbers. So, uh, we'll see what comes up. The good thing about uh, PvP in World of Warcraft Legion is that no matter how much they tune damage numbers to fit PvE, um, PvP talents will be able to be tuned in turn to basically alleviate any problems that uh, are uh, like any issues that come about from being uh, over, uh, I guess, over tuned in PvE uh, so that you aren't effective in PvP. That should no longer be an issue because of separate talent trees. So. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Tearless out.